joining me. I'm Scotty D and I make guitars happy. And this one is a 60s Gretsch Country Gentleman, which is one of my favorites. This one's just absolutely wonderful with its checking lines and all that. Um, I've even considered buying one for myself because I've liked them playing them so much. This is about the fifth one that's been in the shop. Um, and But the ones that I've liked the most have a 12 inch radius on the fretboard. This one's somewhere flatter, like maybe somewhere is around a 16 of inch radius, so it's kind of flat. I don't know if I'll bond with this one as much, but it, it is probably the prettiest one and in close to the best shape of all of them that uh, I've had here into the shop. It, uh, it plays pretty good with 11 through 50 strings. Um, the neck is pretty flat. The action's not the lowest in the world, but it really can't come down because the pickups are way too close to the strings as it is. And of course, it needs work on the binding. All of them seem to have binding rod. Uh, so this spot, I'll be able to cut out that little bit of sawtooth looking area there, square it off around here, and just patch in the black purfling and the white binding and then age the white to a yellow vintage amber. Okay, it's come unglued here. So you might do a little bit of cleaning and gluing. We'll use tape to hold it down while the glue sets. And over here, same thing. A little loose. We'll take off these strings, and we've got some corrosion also over here. We've got an oxidation, green colored corrosion on the strings and the frets. So we'll change the strings and polish the frets. And we'll do the touch up. Well, the, this one has my favorite set of tuners on it too. I love these tuners, they feel so good. Oh, look at that checking on the back of that one. Very nice. First I'll see if there's any loose glue or anything that can flake off of that. It feels pretty hard on the binding side. So I felt like maybe some stuff was flaking off a little bit on the ebony side. Yep. Then I'll get a little tight bond 3. That's the glue I like to use for this. Got some flaky, flaky bits on this end. Just want to knock those off and blow them off. Blow them out of there. Get rid of all those crispies. The crunchy gentleman. It's got crispies. Crispy, crunchy gentleman.
The lacquer on these guitars is usually very solid. Geez, this one looks like it might need a fret dressing. I wonder if you might want to just refret this guitar. That's getting pretty bad as far as fret wear goes. Bad. See how tall these are. These are already below thirty thousandths. I think we should refret it. See where I'm reading about twenty-five thousandths of an inch here. That's that's no good. I got her all strapped in. We're not going to worry about the frets on this guitar. We're just going to do the binding. So, we're going to zoom in right here. See, I've got my Dremel. And I'll show you the whole rig, but I'm going to chip off that flaky binding real quick with the Dremel. Okay, I've got my base on with some tape to protect the lacquer. I've got the diamond bit. And I've got the depth set where I'm not going to be able to go past the lacquer. Oh. Pretty flaky, another big piece chipped off. The rest, I don't think it's going to go much further than that. But uh, I'm going to make a little adjustment on this base and continue squaring that all off. Just want a nice rectangular shape. Using a chisel to refine the area further, I want to make sure everything's square and rectangular. I'm going to be real careful too. We get rid of all the crispy, flaky areas of binding and just work with uh, whatever's left that's solid. I'm not going all the way through both layers of binding. You can see the Country Gentleman has black, white, black, white. So I'll take a little block of wood and 80 grit sandpaper and try to Make sure we have a perfectly square area. There's a little bit of the white still left there. Maybe that's a little bit of the old glue. I use a micro chisel to get that layer off. And then I'll start fitting the pieces in. I just uh, take pieces of veneer that are about half a millimeter in thickness. Well, first. Let's look at the white binding. I use Stuart MacDonald. It's 6.6 .6 millimeters thick by 1.5 millimeters. And you can buy it by the foot, I think. But it's the white, it's not the cream. You're going to have to do a little staining to get that vintage amber look. So I can use that disc sander to really get the right shape on each end. Does anybody want to guess what kind of veneer I use here? Well, the, the dark brown one there, it's a dark brown with black stripes. It's, had, it's a very rift looking or quarter sawn looking. Okay, it's Wenge wood. 
Anyways, they sell these, uh, they being Stuart McDonald, they sell uh, maple purfling. They sell it in regular unstained or black. So they have this like dyed black maple purfling. That's what I use for the little strip that goes on the outer edge. And then on the inner edge, I cut whatever type of veneer. In this case, it was wenge. I actually noticed that that uh, other piece of binding was was loose. So I'm trying to get tight bond three in there. Use the uh, X-Acto blade to, to help kind of shove it up in there. And we'll press it up and down a couple times, kind of use suction to help it squeeze up further inside. I'm going to tape it down just, you know, for starters here, but uh, the tape is not going to actually hold that down real good. I'm going to end up putting a clamp on that area. So Wenge veneer and maple purfling. This is the dyed black maple purfling. For some reason it doesn't come six millimeters in width, so it only comes in this like two millimeters. So you have to kind of stack them. So there's the second layer of tight bond three. I apply that with a metal awl. And the reason I use the metal awl is because I could just wipe it with a wet paper towel and put it back in the drawer real quick. Uh, with a with a paintbrush, you'd have to clean it off or whatever. Just checking to make sure I have enough glue, which I seem to have an ample supply of. What is it time for now? Okay, so I'm going to tape that down nice. This is the Stumac Brown Binding Tape. It comes in uh, three different widths. I keep all three on a, uh, I guess they call it their tape dispenser roll. I have uh, the brown and the orange and uh, two different dispenser rolls, one for each, the brown and the orange. I, I just think it's so convenient to have these tape rolls sitting on the bench. I got one in the garage and one inside in the indoor space. One brown, one orange. I'm going to tape that up and then we'll clamp it up. We'll be all set. We'll give this about six hours to cure. There's always the chance when peeling tape that you can damage the lacquer, peel it right off onto the tape. So this is naphtha. It helps release the uh, adhesive on the back side of this tape from the wood and from the lacquer. It's playing it safe. But the Gretsch lacquer, uh, in my experience, is, is really good quality. It's, uh, it lasts, I mean, it, it ages nicer than most Gibson lacquers that I've seen as far as, you know, it's hard to say though. It's really hard to judge that because it depends on the player. You know, it depends on the conditions in which it's been stored and stuff like that. So a little bit of residue, a little tape residue. Get some more naphtha on here. And that's some serious rust. I'm going to put some rust removing gel on that. I put some here earlier and it did the trick. A little rust removing gel. This should not harm the wood or the binding. It should get the rust off the frets though. Another product from the automotive industry that works great on guitars. Rust removing gel. Get yourself a container of it today. 
at your local advanced auto parts store. Yeah. All right, well, I just peeled off that uh, tape and no lacquer was damaged in the process. But now we got a big old white chunk of binding. I'm gonna have to trim it down a little bit with a file. It's a little, it's perfectly flush over here, but it's, uh, it's a little proud over on that side. I'm gonna see if a little uh, steel wool will take the rust off of frets. And yes, it does. So, that's about the, all this guitar is going to get in the way of fretwork, since he doesn't play it. He said just... Just do the binding. Looked like it needed one more dose, so I hit it again. A lot of crud coming off, anyways. I sure turned the steel wool black. This here is the Miracle Cloth. Oh. It really puts a shine. Ooh. Whatever that stuff is, I don't know. It smells good. This Miracle Cloth says it has coconut oil in it. So it actually smells nice. And boy, does it clean nice. Well, if you can't have new frets, you may as well have shiny old frets. I think we should have refretted her while the strings were off. Man, I don't think that pickguard's ever been taken off. Look at all that spooge underneath there. Dang. Well, anyways, once again, the McGuire's Cleaner Wax does the trick. Man, that, that's about as clean as you can get a guitar right there. An old country gentleman. She's all cleaning up nice now. Just a little wax will do her. Yep. I, see, I got to see a lot of Michigan Wolverine football games this year, so I thought it's about time I retire that old, these old uh, Michigan socks and uh, polish up your old gentleman with the old Michigan socks. Young. Here. But my feet keep growing. Even though I'm getting shorter. My feet keep growing. Those are fake F holes. You ever had your F holes polished? Nice. Okay. Do a little bit of filing over here.
Okay, so right here I'm trying to look real close at the existing checking lines. And they're kind of like paired up, sometimes in threes. I want to kind of mimic that over here. Do like two lines. Then I'll do three here. Then I'll do, I'll do two here. Sometimes I'll make it go a little different direction. And that's simulating a checked lacquer look. Now I can go back over that with some sandpaper. one then I'll clean it out and we'll get ready to stain it I'm gonna drop a little of this bind all in that little crack right there just a little bit Actually, what I just did is I took some acetone and I dissolved Bindall in it. So I made a real liquidy substance that I can drop in to this little crack. So I'll need to clean this crack out a little bit too. Alright. So this looks like it's working pretty good. Gonna bridge that gap there. And the acetone is reacting with all the existing stuff too. It's, it kind of melts it. It'll melt the lacquer too, so you don't want to slip with this. You don't want to mess up. I hit it one more time with that 220 grit sandpaper. Now I took acetone with vintage amber stain. And uh, I'm going to put it on this Q-tip where well, that Q-tip looks a little wet. And that's about it. Don't want to go over that spot more than once. I mean, just... Psh do it once and leave it, you know. I might have gone a little, a little too heavy there. Um, I got a little just plain acetone on a Q-tip. Kind, of, kind of blend that a little bit there. And that's it. Just wait a little bit and uh, put, put some shellacker on her. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna brush this stuff on here. Probably take a couple coats. Mm -hmm.